Hey guys, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try something today, which is I'm gonna try to troubleshoot this ETA two four seven two. So I have two ETA two four seven twos. I did hours and hours and hours of work with these without ever really completely disassembling a movement. And in the process, I got this one working relatively perfectly without a dial and I got this one redialed with a dial that I bought secondhand um, in order to restore it but the watch is no longer running well looks like it's running but actually the our hand is not or the, the the hands are not moving so there's something wrong with the um, keyless works and, and failure to re-engage. And it's also running with extremely low amplitude and also um, runs better or worse depending on if it's in the upside down or up, face side up position. So I don't really know what's problem with it, but I'm prepared now to start to dig into it and try to, I think the first thing I'll try to do is just um, lubricate the balance jewels um, because I have, oh yeah, I want to talk about what, what all the tools and things I have prepared for this. So, um, the iPhone gives me slightly better ability to show you what's over here. But um, that's my video setup. That's how I can kind of watch what I'm doing while I'm doing it to share that with you. And then over here I have some cleaning isopropyl alcohol, also referred to as IPA, a jar for that, some fix-a-drop, which is um, epilum, basically, some B-dip, which is for cleaning um, palette, fork, and uh, impulse jewel without IPA would dissolve the lacquer on that. Some soap for just cleaning things that could be cleaned with soapy water. And a, um, what do you call it, uh, ultrasonic cleaner for that soapy water. A couple of little Bergeon baskets to put jewels in or whatever. This is a, just a, a Bergeon plastic tool that, to, to be able to grab those baskets and dip them in the IPA. Um, some tweezers, screwdrivers. A Mobius beginner's oil kit. We'll get into that when we get into it. Um, an oil dispensing thing. Uh, case cushion if we need that. Oh, oilers, Bergeon. A little rod uh, for holding things down. Some magnifying glasses. Some wood rods. Hand lifters. Movement holder. Dial holder from Cousins, a little stand for the tools, time grapher, uh, some Bergeon parts holders, and some rubber mats for keeping track of screws. And then on the computer screen, um, probably the most important thing for this job for me is I have a watch repair... I have a video of Roger Smith open. Um, I have some watch repair talk uh, tutorial. Not tutorial, but like somebody did a ETA 2472 um, disassembly and reassembly and they, they, on watch repair talk. So I'm going to reference that whenever I need it. And I think that that has enough detail in terms of screws, what they look like, where they go, that I can kind of, I probably won't have to refer back to the video to figure out, or, or, or pictures, to figure out where things came from, in particular because I'm pretty familiar with this movement. Um, so I also have finger cots, but I'm not going to put those on until I get to the, after the cleaning and reassembly. And then... With the time grapher, I'll just show you.
This watch actually runs 18,000 beats per second. So, um, you can see here it's misinterpreting. It thinks it's running a 21600, which it's not. And uh, it's completely confused. Um, it, it, it can't even calculate how, how far off the seconds per day is here. But part of the reason, with the, with the time grapher, you can um, you can instead of auto select, you can set this for um, eighteen thousand. So that's forcing it to to try to read eighteen thousand. But because of the low amplitude or something, it's still. It, it, it's not it's not able to make sense of it but I'll put this other one on it just to show you so this is the same ETA 2472 movement So in this position, it says it's uh, 13 seconds per day slow, but it has an amplitude of 234, beat error of 1.2. It's not perfect, but this is running, and it's and it's you can tell it's measuring at 18,000 beats per second, which is what the 2472 is. And in that other position, it was running a, a little bit slow. Now it's running a little bit fast. So this this watch now it looks like it's basically going to move switch to running with no air, no pretty much zero seconds per day, zero seconds per day. But the um that's how this one should be running, and it's not. So we're gonna. <clears throat> I've, I haven't. I still have not done um, a full. Just want to check something with focus here. I still have not done a full re disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly of any. Well, I did it with the Cal Forty Four as the first thing I ever did. I haven't done a. Let's say I haven't done a successful one with lubrication. And I don't believe that's what I'm going to do right now. The plan is just to um, troubleshoot this right now. Because I would like to know, I would like to know what's wrong with it. If I, if I completely disassemble it, clean it, and reassemble it, which I, I also want to do. But if I do that right now, I'm not going to learn anything. Sorry for the groaning, but I always love it when I, I can't get the case back or the strap off. It's ominous. Um, <clears throat> so what was I saying? Uh, I want to troubleshoot it because I would like to know, I would like to be able to open a watch and, and, and figure out what's wrong with it with that regardless of not having to do a complete rebuild rebuilding is cool I'd like to be able to do that as well but it's kind of two separate things so <clears throat> you can see the amplitude is super low There's a weird thing, which is if I... Last time I was playing around with this... Okay, amplitude is still low like that. The last time I was playing with it, I, if it was in, if it was dial up and I gave it some air to move the um, balance wheel, the amplitude would pick up speed. Um,
Oh, so one of the re one of the idea the theories behind the way that I'm trying to go about this work is I want you to be able to see everything I'm doing. I want to make long edits of these things. So if if you're thinking about doing watchmaking yourself, you can watch one of my videos and you can imagine the whole process because you can see me going through the whole process in real time. And I know it's long and boring and that's just part of the um, challenge for me of trying to to learn and do it relatively quickly and tell you what I'm doing so it's interesting for you. And then of course I can do cut downs and and I did a cut down of the of the Cal forty four. These hands were brand new, new old stock made for this movement. I reloomed them. The hour hand is is problematic because it's so close to the dial. And the dial was also in very good shape. I, I really don't want to destroy them. Um, but everything here, everything I'm doing is a learning experience. There are always going to be some mistakes. You basically can't touch a watch without doing some damage to it. And in fact, brand new watches, when they're manufactured, the, the when a screw is put in the screw head gets distorted slightly because there's force going on. Um, some people may argue with that, but I can show you on, you know, watches that are made today, brand new watch. Uh, that kind of thing happens. Okay, so I'm going to remove the dial. Uh, at some point, I got to get the um, microscope in place. Might as well do that now. That looks like it needs some... Oh, it's going to do some auto color. That's interesting. Um... Set that aside for now. The reason I wanted to look at that is the the dial screws on this. Oh, actually, okay. First of all, one th one step at a time. Uh, I have a movement holder. Okay, this is going to be the movement holder, but for now, because it's got a dial on it still. I'm going to use this larger plastic movement holder. And that's so I can get to these movement screws. I should use a larger screwdriver for that. I don't think I need to remove that right now. I think I just need to loosen it. Oh, I think I can zoom in on this. Okay, now with that movement ring off, we can reach these dial. The screws that hold the dial.
So they are, there's one here and one opposite that. And let's try this with don't really need the microscope for this but let's do it for fun oh I need to f I need to set it I don't want it to constantly be changing its white balance so I'm gonna put something white here oh that's hilarious <laughs> this is magnetic um, I'll white balance it with this light on and Can I do it here? One push. Okay. Now I just need to hit menu. And it should hold that, but we'll see. Okay, so now with this in position, now the cool thing about the microscope in this position is I can I can actually use the microscope so I can see exactly what you see and I can see what I'm doing. can still see that very low amplitude. Hmm, that's interesting. S something even, it could be, could it have to do with the dial? We'll soon find out. Now I think if if I don't remove these, probably gonna get lost. But see how that's free now from that dial pin. There's something else I should do. I never did take the automatic movement off of this. Um, oh yeah, I did. 24-7-2. I did take it off once. So while we're still sitting here, let's just try doing that. I'm gonna try to remember that the blue that that screw was blued and it's on the side with the gears here, because opposite that, it's not blued. And then we should be able to just. I think the automatic move winding mechanism comes off at this point. Okay, so for the, here's the first example, like. Um, I'm going to refer to the PDF. This is a PDF I made of the watch repair talk page about this. Okay, so 
It's just those two screws. It doesn't show that one is being blued, but that, that's probably just this movement is different. So I should be able to pry this where here. Now we can take a look at this because in the example here in the PDF, you can see the exact same the exact same thing we're looking at. Oh wait, this is what I want to look at. 